Now, I am lucky enough to live not far from Motorcycle Mall. Motorcycle Mall is kind of a unique place. I don't know of any place bigger or that carries more brands. And their new bikes are on display this time of year. You can watch this in 4K. All you have to do is adjust your device. I like to go down there and just check out all the new bikes. Now, they carry almost every brand that I can think of. And I'm not sure they, that I've missed any. I try to concentrate on street bikes. But there's dirt bikes there. There's the four-wheel, the off-road, like things hunters use. There's ski-doos. But mainly this video is going to cover what I think are most of the new motorcycles. Some of them I have never seen before. Some of the brands have new models, which is always pretty cool. And one of the things when I go down there, I like to spend a couple hours and chit chat with the people that I used to know very well years ago when they were in the older location. I knew them really well because I was pretty much living down there all the time. And I did buy in 09, I bought my R1 and my 650 Kawasaki there. I would have bought the MT-09 there, except they didn't have a blue one. So they got they got cheated out of that sale. Now, I tried to, the bikes are self-explanatory, but I tried to anywhere there was a price tag that I thought was relevant. And it used to be years and years ago, they would have a price tag on almost every bike. I know a little less now. I don't know if some of the bikes, there were quite a few on sale for thousands of dollars less than list price. I don't know if they were leftovers or whatever. But anyway, a, a point of interest is I got both of the bikes that I bought there in 09 at a significant discount because I bought them in the middle of the winter when there was snow on the ground. I did not buy them on a bright sunny day in the spring. The prices can vary. And the ones I've put on here are only just for reference anyway. If you're going to really buy a bike, you, you're going to negotiate that price, that's for sure. But anyway, some of the things that I enjoy when I go down there. First off, the people that have always been very nice to me. I don't know. I did know a couple of the mechanics. I did know one of the former service managers. And by the way, I'm not getting paid to make this video. This is a just part of my channel. My channel, I have over 3,000 videos, mostly of working on older motorcycles and rides I go on. But you can pretty much look around and see. I don't, I don't think you need a lot of explanation as to what's going on here. And I'm just looking at the, the prices of some of the things that I remember the prices two or three or four years ago. They've gone up significantly. Now, I like to look at things like the seats. The seats... I, since we've recovered many seats, in fact, the the video on my channel that has the most hits is one of recovering seats. And I do have a computerized sewing machine if I wanted to do some of that fancy stitching or embroidery or whatever. But I just like to get ideas. I also like to look at the new trendy colors. Now, this gray color is a new trendy color. I know that. But I have my own set of tastes for my humble bike collection. And anybody that follows my channel knows I have my own set of do's and don'ts when it comes to customizing motorcycles. I pre my prejudice is I don't like flat black. I like things to shine. But anyway, it's all in the eye of the beholder anyway. And what's really nice about this is there is something. I always say there's something for everybody there. Whether you're, in fact, while I was shooting this video, there was a guy out in the parking lot tuning a race bike with number plates and everything on it and going up and down in the parking lot, and I didn't get a chance to get them on video, but of course I wanted to get all the new bikes, but it's a cool place to hang out too. And especially in the summer, there's always something going on there. They have stunt shows on my channel. There were, I think three or four stunt shows that I recorded for Motorcycle Mall. They're all out on my channel. And you just put my name in quotation marks and somewhere on this video, I'll put where that, what that name should look like if you're doing a search. In fact, I'll put it on right now, just make it easier. And if you do a search in my channel, that's how you spell my name. Always go to the, there's three channels of mine out there. Go to the one that has a Ferrari flag behind my face and type in the topic. 
Now, I did really, a couple of things I did really enjoy about today is I was looking at, and, and a lot of these models, I've seen them on the internet, I've seen pictures of them, but to me, I like to, I like to see things in real life. I like to see and feel and look at the, the quality, the build quality, and most of all, the paint. Now, to be honest, the paint quality on almost every bike there was really exceptional. I think the, all of the manufacturers have gotten the paint quality down to a science. But there's some very cute things. There was some flat color paint. There was a Ducati that was flat green. There was a, I don't remember what bike, there was a flat blue bike. And, and I know that's trendy among young people. And well, I, to me, I'm just old school. I like shiny and I always like shiny black. Now I had all my race bikes in the past and which there are many, were black and gold. Gold wheels, black paintwork. And one of the bikes in my collection now, the 650, has that just, just as a nostalgia thing for me for remembering the good old Amor days. But I'm looking at the modern, there's a modern Yamaha, and look at the quality of that paint. But all of the bikes were like that, most of them. Uh, maybe there's a few exceptions. Here's a black and gold, in fact. Yamaha copied my race bikes. Now, back in the old days, when my late friend George Venturini had an anodizing shop, we used to take the Yamaha cast wheels and he'd iridite them, not anodize them, iridite them. That looked pretty cool. That, I did many of them that way, in fact. The seats, again, I'm always looking for ideas on the seats. I'm in the middle right now of making my own carbon fiber seat cowl. For, in fact, I'm making two of them. And I'm gonna be posting that video very soon. But looking at this, I. I came away with some ideas of things for my future projects. Now, every every year I try to make a little hit list of things I'd like to do, change, modify on my humble collection, but it never hurts to have new ideas now. Uh, to me, looking at the bikes, looking at color combinations in real life, all, all of the beautiful, some of the bikes, even the wheels were beautiful. Yeah, you now years ago, what would happen is I'd go down, it'd be a beautiful bike, and the wheels were flat black, and I'd go, oh my God. But I understand young people do like flat black I, for whatever reason. Look at the look at the quality of that wheel. Wow. And when Joe Roselli got his MV Augusta, the first thing I noticed was the quality of the wheel paint or powder coating, whatever it is. This was the highest end full race Kawasaki. Look at it. it's got the high end forks, the high end. Engine output, oh, I don't know how many hundred, 200 plus horsepower. This was really beautiful. I looked at this for quite a while, looking for details. I know this is one of the bikes Luciano lusts for, among others. But he's a Kawasaki guy, and boy, that the paintwork on that was beautiful. The wheel stripe, everything, everything. It just, it just... That's what's nice about going down there. And by the way, what's what's always cool too, if, even if you're not looking to buy a new bike, it's a good idea just to look around and see some of the things that are available in the price range that you're looking for. Some of the high-end bikes that I looked at today were as much as $35,000. Maybe some were more because they didn't even have the price tag. And there were some bikes down there that I thought, well, I, they might have been leftovers. I thought they were a bargain. If I was looking to get an entry-level bike, I, there were some bikes that were really a good buy. So this was a lot of fun today. Now, I played a little scam on one of the salesmen. One of the young salesmen came over to me, and he saw I was taking pictures. And they were all very nice. Being honest, I've never had a bad experience there. And I forget what his name was. I forget it now. But I said, hey, I, I, I was dressed in street clothes, didn't have my riding gear on. I said, you know, I'm kind of new to this. My grandson wants to uh, get a motorcycle. And I'm lo I was looking at one of the 1,000 CC race bikes. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, you know, is this an appropriate bike for a new a beginner, a new person? And he looked at me like I had three heads. No, 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 let me take you over by the mini bikes. And they do sell mini bikes there. So I didn't want to I didn't want to ruin his day or anything. I, I didn't leave that. The conversation in the video might have been embarrassing. And there was some, another, and I thought a little bit embarrassing there. There was a, a young girl, and maybe I'm wrong about this. She was sitting on a 1,000cc Suzuki, 
and the guy was explaining to her what the clutch is and why you have to step on the brake and, and uh, what this, and I was just thinking, this wouldn't be my first choice of a bike if that was uh, my daughter, girlfriend, or wife. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe she was a MotoGP rider, who even knows? But it's so much fun being there. It's just great being there. And I know I'm talking over all this footage, but the honest truth is, if you're you're looking at this, you could pretty much figure out that's a KTM. And, and I remember riding Ray's 390 KTM on 106. I had my RD400. We switched bikes, and I said, this feels just like an RD400. And I turned the key, and up came ready to race. None of my bikes have that. My bikes are not ready to race. And I, uh, Stefan in Romania, I know, got has this bike. I don't know if he has this exact one, but... And I uh, haven't heard from him in a while, but I know he was out there riding it the last time we corresponded, ready to race. Wow. I, I wonder if when you get pulled over for a ticket, and, and I'm sure I'm sure you, these people are prone to get tickets. I'm sure if they see that written on the tank, they go, uh, maybe you get the, uh, <laughs> you don't get parking on the grass. Now, back in the day, everything was about having a round headlight like the GS 1100 has. Every bike here had a different headlight. I took a lot of pictures of the nose sections. I'm always looking for ideas to do some mods on my bike. But, and I'm always looking at paint, paint treatment, colors, what color combinations go look real good in real life. It's funny how things in a picture can be different than when you see them in real life. I like that color combination. That was really nice. And, of course, uh, Jose, he loves his adventure BMWs. By the way, they don't sell BMWs there. I don't know why. And they used to sell motor guzzies. I didn't see any motor guzzies there. Henry, I'm sorry. But, but I love this stitching. And uh, next time I make a seat, I think I'm going to try to get some, some <laughs> fancy stitching in it. Ready to race. <laughs> i got to put that on one of my bikes one of these days. Just get a sticker that says, ready to race. I don't know, put it on upside down or something. That I like that color combination, by the way. Now, as I'm looking close, and it's the nose sections, the bikes that have a beak all seem to have just very intricate nose sections and multiple lighting. And some of the bikes, these are the higher end bikes. And these are beautifully made. The finish is just off the chart. And there's something about seeing it in real life that to me is so much better. Look at that exhaust system, it looks like a fuel dragster. <laughs> a pretty cool back wheel too. But there's so many cool things there. You could, your head could spin going back and forth, back and forth, up and down. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna post what the hours are there, because their winter hours and summer hours are, are different. And I'd hate if somebody from out of the area drove all the way down there from an hour away or something, and they were closed. So I'll post that at the very end of this. And I'll do an overview of what this dealership looks like. But right now, I wanted to concentrate, try to get as many of the new bikes on this video. Now, I tried, I, I was going to, in the beginning, put all the dirt bikes on here and all the four-wheel things. And I said, no, nah, I'll just concentrate pretty much on street bikes. And this is the flat paint I was talking about, flat green. Flat, Motor Guzzi had a color like that on their bike for a while. And... In real life, it looks very different than the picture. And I know it appeals to a lot of people. Uh, the only problem is I am old and old school at the same time. There's a nice nose section here. That's on one of the real high-end Ducatis. With the wings, the carbon fiber wings. You know, because I can make my own carbon fiber parts, and I actually have molds for wings from the model airplane days. I could put some wings on my bike, but uh, I often thought those wings, you might pull into a parking spot and <laughs> catch one of those wings on a sign or something. <laughs> I don't know. Now, they're cool, and these bikes, I, I don't want to sound like I'm belittling any bikes. I love all motorcycles. I wish I had the money for every bike at Motorcycle Mall. In a, in a perfect world, I would own Motorcycle Mall and every day go jump on a different bike and shoot the video. But now, there's a significant thing. My channel is geared toward sharing the world of motorcycling. Specifically, during the winter months, we share things that we work on, custom paintwork, carbon fiber parts, modifying bikes. And, and in the summer, we go on a lot of rides, some group rides, some alone. But what's nice about this, and I think having this video, and I try to do at least one of these every year when the new bikes come out, 
is there's people I know that live in parts of the country where they don't have a motorcycle mall, you know, and they're maybe never get to see these period unless you look on the internet. And, and it's different when you're looking at an advertisement that a manufacturer makes, they're going to get everything to look perfect, but you see it, look at that front end. You see it under these conditions and it, sometimes it looks very, very different when it's not made by the manufacturer. So I don't know if that's really a significant thing, but I know when I went looking for my MT-09, first thing I did, Luciano and I went to Motorcycle Mall. We narrowed it down because I had a blank check. We narrowed it down to two bikes, the Retro 900 Kawasaki and the MT-09. I sat on both of them. I liked the feel of the MT-09 a whole lot better. It felt a lot lighter. And for my body size, shape, and age, it was more appropriate. And I've never looked back and said, oh, what a mistake that was. I have fallen in love with the bike. But part of it was going down to these places, and they really don't want you to sit on the bikes. But if you talk to the salesman, they'll, and they stand there and watch you, that you know how to get on and off a bike, usually you can get to sit on them. And a lot of times a bike that, and it's the biggest mistake you can make if you're buying, especially a high-end motorcycle, and you, you think it's going to be your end-all, be-all, end-all bike. The first time you ride it 100 miles, it's so uncomfortable or your neck is sore or you have wrist pump or something. Uh, I don't know. So sitting on a bike is important. And that's what I really like about being able, in my case, it's only a five-minute ride from my house. And usually when somebody else is going down there, I try to meet him there. We meet at my house and go down there. And Luciano, Luciano and I have been there many, many, many times. And again, it is, it's a great experience. I've tried to document on my channel places like black and gray Honda that a lot of people would not have the opportunity to go to. And there's a hundred classic antique Hondas in black and gray. But you have to search my channel. You have to, if you're in YouTube, you got to put quotation marks around my name. If you're already in my channel and you can search it, search for and you like this video, search, put the words in black and gray Honda and you'll be amazed. Put in the stunt show. If you're on my channel, the stunt shows were wonderful. If you're a young guy, you'll probably love them. They're, they're really doing some cool stuff. Now, me, my stunt days are over and uh, this is the stunt I do, making videos to share with my friends. If you're watching this and enjoying this, maybe you'll become one of my friends and you you certainly can comment on a video and all I can say is if, you, if you've enjoyed this video you might enjoy some of the others it's a very eclectic channel we just posted a trip to France that had motorcycles at the Eiffel Tower we we do other things in the world of motorcycles as well as just look at bikes and oogle them up at Rockwell Ducati is another place we go to on a regular a regular basis and it's just the world of motorcycles is like a buffet and there's so many good things and all you have to do is figure out what you like and then figure out how you can get the money for some of this new stuff but i really i really think motorcycle mall is just a cool place to do a visit like i did today i spent a couple hours there and it was just it inspired me it gave me some food for thought Maybe this video will give you some ideas of things you want to do, maybe something you want to buy or you want to look at up close and personal. You can put the video on stop. And I, I looked at the wheels on, the, on this bike and I know Stefan has one of these too in Romania. I don't know if he, he had some custom wheels with gold rims made. That's all that stuff's on our channel. And I, the bikes are beautiful in real life. It's, it's funny to, to be walking around a showroom like this and the bikes all look beautiful to me. And when I look at them out in the sunlight and they have a coat of dirt on them from riding, uh, they look, this is like a beauty contest, like a bikini contest here that uh, everything is just exactly how it should be. And in my case too, because I'm a painter, looking at the paintwork, the modern paintwork, again, I, I've said it already in this video, the modern paintwork, every manufacturer, even the Benelli that was there, the Benelli, and I, I refinished, I repainted Vlad's Benelli, the the 900, and the, the original paint was not that good. The paint on that new Benelli was off the chart beautiful. 
So I think all the manufacturers have made a lot of upgrades and a lot of things that uh, I, I don't know how to explain it. They're just, to me, I have a passion for motorcycling my whole life, and I really do enjoy checking out the bikes. Now here's an example of something. My friend Scott out west is anticipating making a set of gold rims for his bike. And I, I explained to him, you know, you could if there's a showroom down there and you can go look at the exact bike you have with or even online, maybe you want silver, maybe you want gold. I've painted them both ways. I have gold wheels on one bike and silver wheels on two, two of the other bikes. But here you can see it in real life. Now, my comment here, see how gold the forks are? I would have made the wheels the same color as the forks, a really bright gold, which I've already done. I mixed my own pe paint, got the pigment from Amazon. That's another interesting thing on my channel. If, this, if you're new to my channel, you can do a search for painting wheels, custom wheels, paintwork. Any of that comes up, even mixing custom paint which I've done a lot of on the channel, silver and gold both. Here's the bikes. Uh, a good friend, Joe Roselli, has a very similar bike. I'm not sure. If his is, is the America, Pan America or America. And this is the one with spoke wheels. Look at those wheels. And s some of these are just, you look at them close. This one has something. It's got some embroidery on the seat. Look at the embroidery on the back of the seat. And I'm not big on stickers all over the bike. That's not for me but minimize the stickers, but I understand this is what sells bikes. And uh, <laughs> look how beautiful that is. Oh my God, the finishes, the fit and finish on some of these bikes. It's, it's really beautiful. Look at the embroidery on the seat. That caught my eye. Now I can do that. I have a computer driven sewing machine, but I, I just don't know what I wanna do. Now maybe in the future I'll put something like that, put my name on a seat or something. I don't know. But getting ideas, and even watching this video, you may be getting ideas. Look at this. This thing's got a, some kind of a, a big disc on the back wheel. Look at the exhaust pipes on this. Now, I know Joe put a, look at this, is embroidered in there. I know Joe put a custom exhaust on his bike. Um, we, the day he put it on, we were doing some, some run-bys, and it was a lot of fun listening to it. And this is similar to the paint job he has, but it's a different model. And, but all of these bikes, wow. You, you, when you leave the place, your head is spinning. It's, it's amazing. I, I don't know, that, that looks pretty cool. I don't know how that functions though. Is that just a cosmetic thing or? Look at that exhaust. Boy, that is beautiful. And it's got a beautiful finish on it. Seat, wow, that is beautiful. There's no doubt in my mind. This is flat red. Now, I really don't like flat paint, but this kind of caught my eye. I said, ooh, that, that's flat. And again, I don't know the advantage, disadvantage, or, you know, there's no point arguing. It's all in the eye of the beholder anyway. And look at the wheels. The wheels are like a mirror. And this is one of the, I think this is the real high-end one here. I'm not sure. There's one there that was uh, over 30 grand. And look at the fit and finish on all these parts and holy mackerel, look at the shine on that paint. That is beautiful stuff. That is really, really nice stuff. Oh man, my head is spinning after a day there. I, re I really did enjoy going there and look at the wheels. I love spoke wheels. I wish I had a set of spoke wheels on my 37,000 on my RD. And now this is a, I don't know if this is the one. Joe Roselli had a four cylinder Brutali. Look at this, it's got the guy who made the bike, who assembled it, his name is on the frame there. That's pretty cool. In fact, I had to go back and look at that. That's pretty neat. I guess in Italian, that means that guy put it all together. Pretty cool. Maybe I should pick a thing that I put my bike together. <laughs> Basically the ones I restored, I did. Anyway, again, I love I love tastefully done exhaust. That was a good one. And this, the paint, again, as a painter, I'm prejudiced, but that paint looks 10 feet deep. It looks like you could dive into it, dive off a, a swimming, a diving board and go right into it. That is nice. Now, the wheels are like a mirror. And if you have a bike with flat black wheels, the simplest upgrade you can make is make them shiny to me. 
make them shiny, powder coat them, or paint them. And again, look at what's the latest style in paintwork, the latest style in headlights, all of the electronics. I'm, I'm sure most of these, if not all of them, have all the modern safety features. Uh, my head is spinning. That's all I can say. And I look at some of the, <laughs> like, like these wheels. That is really cool. The tail tidies, I don't really, not crazy about this thing with the tail light. I, I, I get rid of that on my MT-09 very early in the owning of the bike. I never really took a head count of how many bikes. At the end of this, I'm going to do a pan around. There has to be hundreds of bikes there. And I mean hundreds. It's not, I'm not exaggerating. And again, I really, you can never leave the sound on when you go there because they always have some kind of music playing that YouTube does not like to hear music playing in the background. So I have to do this, this jibber jab of voiceover. Look at a seat on that. That's kind of a cool seat. And that's, that's the retro bike, one of them that Kawasaki makes. And I remember when Jose road tested that bike, I, the day they were doing Kawasaki uh, ride demo at Motorcycle Mall. And let me mention that. If you get on their mailing list, they do, KTM does a demo day. It's Turbo Steve and I went there. Uh, Jose goes there with the Kawasaki ones. I don't know what other brands they do. But if you're looking to buy, let's say you're looking to buy a blank, 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 go down there on demo day and get there early. Just get there early and take a demo ride. It doesn't cost you a penny. And while you're there, you can check out all the other bikes. So sounds like they're paying me for this video. They're not, believe me. <laughs> Maybe if... Maybe if they want to send me a check, I won't say no. Or buy me a pizza, that'll work. Anyway, I do enjoy the world of motorcycling. I enjoy every aspect of it. And it's so sad when I hear people argue and complain, my bike's better than yours, mine's faster, mine's newer, mine's shinier. Because the world of motorcycling is a very tiny sliver of humanity. And it would probably benefit us all if we all uh, realized we all breathe the same air, and <laughs> we all do love these two-wheel vehicles. That's the latest version of Turbo Steve's bike, I think, the W. Look at the paint, though. Woo! And the fit and finish of things. It seems, it, But it seems like no one manufacturer, they all got better. Because I do remember many, many years ago, the bikes, some of them really didn't have really nice paint. It was close, but no cigar. And the finish on some things looked a little crude. Doesn't look like anything's crude anymore. And look at the wheels. I love the shiny black wheels. And the Hayabusa, my good friend Bob Hunt, when he got his Hayabusa, I went out with my GS1100. And Bob, if you ever get to see this video, you'll know I'm not kidding. We switched bikes. That Hayabusa was a rocket ship. And it was very, a very, he had one of the first ones. Very cool. Very, very cool. And, of course, I, for one, enjoy all aspects of motorcycle, even the smaller bikes. And as I'm getting older, I like the smaller bikes even more. But I always enjoy a day at Motorcycle Mall. I always enjoy a good cup of coffee right next door is McDonald's. Get yourself a big cup of coffee. Walk over there. The people are friendly. And I don't know what to say. Look how many bikes are there. And... You, every time you go there, they're in a different spot. I think they move them around like a grocery store does, just to make you crazy. They're always in a different spot every time you go. Anyway, these are the summer hours. If you're coming from far away, the winter hours are different. You can check it on their website, and it's important. So as we close out this video, I hope you did enjoy sharing this experience of going down there. I always come back with some ideas. I always enjoy the, uh, the trip down there, and it is, it is, in my estimation, it's a very special place, and maybe I could uh, somehow convince them I can test ride all these new bikes when they come in, but I don't think that's going to happen. Anyway, there's other, there's other videos on this channel you may enjoy. Do a search for anything, but thanks, guys, again, so much for watching.